Welcome to the Barawan Branch Model Railway. In this brief video I plan and model a mullock heap. Mullock heaps in Gympie were the spoil dug from underground gold mines. In the 1960s, there were still many mullock heaps around town on which we climbed and hunted for gold flecks. This photo from the early 20th century shows the heaps on the field below the bridge. In the 1960s, work had begun removing some of the heaps in this area. However, there were still heaps closer to the rail line and it's one of those that I plan to represent. Mullock heaps could be any size, but generally, they were massive, perhaps 30 feet or more high and 2 to 3 times as wide at the base. And, as the prototype photo shows, they could be very long. Sighting a heap on the diorama presented both a challenge and an opportunity. The challenge was how to position the heap to convincingly convey its mass, but without completely overwhelming the diorama. The opportunity was that the heap could be used as a natural backdrop or view restrictor by forcing viewers to look at the diorama from the other side, the side from which I watch trains. So the key decisions were height, which also determined width, and alignment. 50 mm was too low and 100 mm appeared a bit too high for the diorama. 75 mm was a good compromise, tall enough to be convincing, but not overwhelming. Even so, the base is about 150 mm which takes up much of the area below the railway embankment. One way around that is not to model the full width, effectively making this the rear of the diorama in a viewing sense. The alignment of the heap also influences its role within the diorama. Running it parallel with the diorama side encourages the viewer to move to the other side. Angling the heap across the area would break the full view of the diorama, but not necessarily force the viewer to the other side. I finally decided to depict one heap in half relief. I first cut foam pieces to the approximate outline. Then I traced the new side profile onto a length of 3mm ply sheet and cut it out on the bandsaw. I glued the new side onto the diorama's existing side before gluing the foam pieces in place. I finalized the profile and slope with a coat of Sculptit. The model's steeper slope is a necessary compromise between the space available and the height required. This is less noticeable when viewed from across the track. I dabbed raw umber, white and black watercolors on the pre-damp and sculpted in the same way that I prepared the ground coloring in episode 2. I raised one side of the diorama so that the face of the heap was nearly horizontal. This allowed me to spread and glue medium stones across the heap face. Those stones provided some tooth to catch stones that I added later. This photo has some interesting features to model. Note the lighter and darker areas that run down the slope. Also, it appears that the lighter material is generally finer than the darker material. Note also the area where darker material has slipped down to the base of the right-hand heap. I used fine, medium and coarse grey stones as the base colour for the heap. Dark spoil was represented by medium and fine dark grey stones. For lighter spoil, I used pale tile grout and medium quartz colored stones. I spread each color down the slope in a series of stripes and secured it with scenic cement. Once dry, I spread more stones to soften the overall effect. For a bit of fun, I glued some chips of parides, or fool's gold, randomly on the heap. Although difficult to photograph, the chips do catch the light as one moves around the diorama. Completion of the mullock heap ends the groundwork. I can now move on to ground cover and scenic detailing. Until next time, happy modeling.